So hi everyone, it's Sandra here from the Agile Sew. Today I'm going to show you how to create a burn-up chart. So a burn-up chart is a visual representation of a sprint's completed work compared with its total scope. So if you're an RTE of a train, a burn-up chart is a great way to track your feature progress across all of your teams within a train for a specific PI. So let's say for this demo that we're going to create we are on PI 10. So we're going to create a burn up. So for PI 10, we're going to say it's going to have four sprints. Okay. Sprint one is going to be a three week sprint. And the other sprints, okay, so the other sprints are going to be two weeks. Two weeks in length. And we are also going to have a three week IP sprint. Now, obviously, depending on your PI, the length of your PI, you can adjust this. For example, you may work in three week sprints, so it's easy to change um, and then modify it according to your needs. So let's start PI 10. This is our current PI. We're going to say here that this is the end of PI planning. So this is the end of this was the end of our previous PI. It's a date. So we know that our for PI 10 that we've got four sprints. We know that our first sprint is going to be three weeks. So I'm going to say that 10.1, which is sprint one, is going to be three weeks. So I'm going to say three here. Our second sprint is going to be two weeks. Our third sprint is also going to be two weeks. Our fourth sprint is also going to be two weeks. And then our IP is going to be three weeks. Just do that. Okay. And then what I'm going to put here is I'm just going to say end of week. Okay. And I'm going to just to make it a bit easier to see, I'm going to just add a border. Also, I'm just going to merge this a little bit so it's easier to visualize. Okay, and center that. Okay, so we know that the, let's say, for example, that our, the end of our previous PI finished on the 31st of March, 2023. So that means that we've got three weeks in sprint one. So we wanna say, we wanna do it week by week. So week one, the end of week one is going to be this plus seven days. Okay, spring two is going to be this plus seven days and so on. Okay, so we can just copy and paste that and this will give us the end of our end of our weeks each week uh, in every sprint. Okay. And I don't know why that's bold. Okay. It's quite difficult to read this and we know that we're in 2023, so we don't, I'm just going to format this a bit nicer so it's a bit easier to read so i'm going to go to format cells i'm going to go to custom and i want to see the date in the format of day and months okay like this that's quite nice also just to make it a bit easier i'm just going to <clears throat> also add a bit of color just to kind of make it a bit better and we will build this part Okay, next we want to record the the planned features per sprint. Okay, so this is the planned features per sprint. So this, we're saying that at the end of sprint one, the teams are planning to deliver nine features. At the end of sprint two, the teams are going to deliver 27 features. At the end of sprint three, they're going to deliver 33 features. At the end of sprint four, they're going to deliver 51. And at the end of the PI, they're going to deliver eight <coughs> or seven. So this adds up to a total of 127 features. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, again, just to make it a little bit easier to visualize, I'm just going to block this out here. Okay. The next <coughs> field we want to do is the actual delivery plan. So delivery. 
delivery plan. Okay, so this is at the end of your PI planning. We know that the teams usually have a plan. So they've they've committed to delivering a number of features and they have a plan of when or which sprint they're going to deliver those features in. And this is what we put here. So let's say, for example, that they're going they're not going to deliver much for the first couple of weeks of the first sprint. So at the end of sprint one, they're going to deliver nine features. Okay, at the end of sprint two, let's say they're going to deliver 36 features. At the end of sprint, sorry, I'm going to put here 36. At the end of sprint three, they're going to deliver 68 features. So let's say 69. And at the end of sprint four, they're going to deliver 120. And at the end, they're going to deliver 127. Okay, so you can see here we've got a breakdown per week. Okay, of the number of features that are going to be delivered. So that's when the teams are planning, and obviously it's, it's cumulative. The next one is the actual number of features. So this is the actual delivery. So this is the number of features closed. So you as an RTE would update this on a very regular basis, depending on, you might do it every day, every couple of days. Um, just to keep track of where we are. So let's say, for example, that this is the actual delivery. So they've delivered, let's say, on the 14th, they delivered four features. On the 21st, they delivered four. The 28th, they delivered eight. Then 12, and 16. 32, 46, and 76. So let's say that we're still, we've only just started the IP sprint, um, so um, these are still blank. Okay. The next one is the actual PI scope. So this is the 127 features, so they are planning on delivering 127 features for the whole PI. Okay. Now, what's very useful is to do a comparison. Okay, so what I find really useful is to say, okay, well, let's, can I track my um, previous PIs? Okay, so you might want to see or track the trend of your, PO, your PI 8 and PI 9. And a great way to do this, it's easy to do, is just basically to put in the number of features that uh, in the last PI and previous PI that they closed. So if maybe you might notice that your previous PI might be five or six sprints, that's okay, just take the first four, okay? So for this example, let's put in uh, zero, zero, four, nine, 10, 27, let's say 34, 45, 50, 83, 100, 107, and 110. And then for PI 9, let's put in uh, 1, 1, 4, 8, 17, 24, 32, 42, 47, 59, and 68. Okay, just to make it a little bit easier to visualize, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of color in here. Um, and this one the same. And then I'm just going to make these slightly lighter just to differentiate it. Okay, okay. So now what we have is all the information that we need. So we want to put this into a nice chart so we can see the trend and the profile. So what we do is we highlight all of these cells here, we go to insert, we select charts, and I'm actually going to go with a combo. <clears throat> so what I would like is a line chart for all of the fields except for my actual, my number of features delivered, and the rest are all lines. So I'm going to go OK. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the planned number of features to make it a bit more visual. Okay, I'm going to make it a tiny bit bigger. Okay, 
I'll move this over here. Okay, so what you can see here now in the chart is we've got the yellow line across the top represents the scope of the PI. So in this case, it's 127 features. We can see that the red line represents the actual planned delivery plan. Okay, what they plan during the PI planning. And the bars themselves rep represent the actual numbers of features closed. And there's clearly something wrong here with the 26th of May. Uh, uh, okay. That's a bit strange. Uh, let's just see. Uh, sorry, I changed the wrong one there. Um, okay, sorry, I have a typo here. That should have actually been 32. Sorry. Okay, I was wondering why that looked a bit. Let's put 36. Okay. So you can see here, um, this is the actual number of features that have closed. Okay, so you can see that the we are very far off our planned delivery. So as an RTE, this is very concerning for you because you can see that all of your features are going to be closed at the end of the PI and a lot of them are going to close in the IP sprint, which is not ideal. Okay. Now, just to make it a little bit easier to follow, what you could do is you could see here also that we have the blue line represents the delivery profile for what they delivered during for PI8 uh, and the green represents what they delivered for the PI9. Okay. So what we can do here, just to make it a bit more visual, is we could just say, okay, I don't just want to see, make that dotted, so it's not as obvious. So you can clearly see, it's easier to see your, your current PI profile. So let's go with this, and that, and for some reason this is not changing. And I haven't selected it, okay. Okay, there we go. Next, what we can do is we can add in a title for our chart. So we can say, let's say our train name is called Moon, and it's PI10. Okay, we can make it a little bit smaller. So let's make it 10, um, and we can make it bold. Okay, we can add in a few labels. So let's put in a text box. So let's say Sprint 1. Um, Let's say this one is Sprint 2, this one is Sprint 3, and we have Sprint 4, and we have the IP Sprint, okay. So what we can do also is to, we can add in a line which we can separate. So we can use this to separate our actual sprints. So we can say that on the 21st of April, which is here, sprint one ends. Okay, so we can put it up here. Okay, sprint two ends on the 5th of May. So let's put that here. Sprint 3 ends on the 19th of May, here. Sprint 4 ends on the 2nd of June, and the IP sprint is after that. And then what we can do is we can move our labels over here, um, and we can obviously format them a bit better. So in this case, so I'm going to say um, no line on this one here, no line. Okay, and here, let's bring this over here. We can move it down as well. And we can say no line. Okay, and okay, this one here. say no line and then the IP is here and no line okay so here you can see that we've added in sprints so you can clearly see for your train across all of your different PIs across all of your different sprints your planned delivery versus the actual delivered features
Okay, and you can compare it then to a number of your previous PI profiles. So the idea here is that you can look at your past profiles when you're during the PI planning and try to get the teams to plan a little bit better and maybe more deliver more incrementally. So in this PI here, you can clearly see that a lot of the features are closing at the end of the last sprint and rolling into the IP sprint. So this is definitely an area for improvement for the upcoming or the next PI to see if the teams can deliver a lot more incrementally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Included just below this video is a link to download this example burn-up chart that we've created. And if you'd like to receive more practical tips on SAFE and Scrum, then sign up to my newsletter on theagilesoul.com or join our private Facebook group at theagilesoul.com.